let's say hi to some guys. We have... I'm going to butcher your names. Eins Gonzalez, Reefing with Billy Pipes. Billy, what's up? El Kabong, Ed's Fish Tank Extreme. Of course, Ed. Uh, Mike Lemming. Dude, you've got to wait. I'm usually late to my own shows. I was watching Star Wars with my son. Didn't even get to finish it. That's not good. Uh, episode 4, by the way, 1 through 3 do not exist. No such thing. Phil, what's up, man? Uh, Mike's Reef. What's up, Mike? Gary. What's up? Uh, I'm, of course, here. Matthew Curtin. Andrew Gomez. Uh, Bay Area Reefs. Sweaty Reef. Reef Spy. What's up, Reef? Uh, okay, so let's get started. How are you guys doing? Um, you know what? Thank you very much for being part of the show and watching. I want to thank all the new subscribers for joining us. This Rod or Two Brief is all about saltwater aquarium care with a twist. Um, I'm changing up the show a little bit, whereas Friday nights at 10 p.m., I go live and I stream. You guys can see what you're all chatting about right over there. And, you know, Saturdays I do a quick slice and dice edit and I throw it up on Saturdays. That is the show for Rod or Two Brief. And then, of course, during the week I'll have, like, little videos keeping you guys updated on my aquariums and what I'm doing with my iPhone, all right? Once in a while, I'll, I'll go back to the old format and do uh, some shows, but for the most part, this is the main show. Um, any questions or comments, you put them down below in all the videos. I really appreciate it. I wanted to take a uh, moment and just let you know that um, being that I am a guitar player and the Saltwater Aquarium stuff is really cutting into the music time, I'm working on a new album with one of the vocalists in the studio here. Um, I asked him to be part of it, and he said he would. That's great. So along with that, I'm uh, gonna be working on a new YouTube channel for those metalheads out there and musicians. It's gonna be interviewing bands through Skype, basically just like, uh, you know, Reef Talk, but it's going to be music and metalheads and bands and musicians. It doesn't have to be metalheads. It's going to be basically all music encompassing all styles, blues, jazz, metal mainly, um, musicians that I find on Facebook and whoever wants to be part of the show. I'm also going to do interviews over the phone. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, Mahoney may or may not be part of it. I don't know yet. I'll do some guitar playing. And, you know, I'm going to show tips and tricks on audio engineering in my recording studio, along with video editing and whatnot. So, check the link in the video description below. It's called Rotter Studios. And if you do a search for Rotter Studios, you'll find it on YouTube. All right. Um, always check the video description for that stuff. So, that's where what little time I have left in the week is going to go. To that channel, I'm going to see how many subscribers I can get. Um, also, one of the entertainment attorneys that I work with in the music field, I'm gonna get her on. Uh, she's gonna have maybe a monthly show or a bi-weekly show, she's totally awesome. Her name is Michelle. And uh, I'm gonna be interviewing her and asking her questions such as copywriting and infringement and things like that that newcomers to the music scene and even seasoned musicians um, could gain knowledge from, she's awesome. So. Today we're going to talk about the Mandarin Gobi. All right, you guys? Now, the Mandarin Gobi is one of the most beautiful fish you can get for the saltwater aquarium. Saltwater aquarium are much more beautiful than freshwater fish. No offense to freshwater keepers, but it's just the truth. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to get into the saltwater aquarium hobby. And I was telling Scott from Mile High Reefers today, I said, dude, if I would have known then what I know now, I may get into the hobby, but I'm not sure because is saltwater aquarium keeping expensive? Hell yeah. It's way too expensive. Way, I mean, it's, it's nuts. So that said, you go through the store, the LRS, local reef store, um, also known as LFS, local fish store. I think that's a stupid ass name, so I call it LRS. And you're going to look at all these cool-looking fish, right? 
One of them you're going to come across is the Mandarin Gobi. Looks just like this. Look at how gorgeous that fish. Look at how gorgeous that fish is. Now, a lot of you guys know about this fish, but a lot of you may not. These guys are amazingly striking in looks. Fucking gorgeous, pardon my Italian. I mean, look at this. They're incredibly laid back. Very, very sweet fish. They spend their time pretty much all day scavenging off rocks and eating. Now, one of the important things with these guys is you've got to have enough food in the tank or they will die. Now, I had a mandarin gobi when I started out because I just had to have it, right? The local reef store did not ask me what size tank I have. Now, these guys grow to be about three inches long. You get them when they're about two inches long and they're about an inch wide. They're, they're smaller. And they don't ask you, as most fish places won't, what size tank do you have? Because they just really want to make a sale, honestly. And they want to make some money. Now, these guys are pretty cheap. You would think they'd be really expensive, but they're about 40 bucks. And getting back to the reef store, here's what they eat. They eat copods, known as pods. They're tiny, tiny little bugs, insects, parasite if you will, they look like little see-through shrimp. The adults get to be about two millimeters long, no bigger than that, and that's kind of rare. They're about half a millimeter to a millimeter in size. A lot of people will get frustrated or nervous, I should say, at first when they see as their tank matures over the three to six months, it looks like there's tons of bugs all over their sand and their rocks, especially if there's no fish present. They freak out. And those are these little pods. All right, now let me get a picture of them here for you. These guys live in the rocks and in the sand. They eat detritus, which is fish crap. They also feed on algae. So it's a balance with these pods in your aquarium. You gotta have the algae and the fish crap so these guys can eat. However, part of the goal as a fish keeper, a reef keeper, is to get the detritus, the fish crap, and the green algae out of your aquarium. But the pods feed on that. And here's a photo of what those pods kind of look like. Those ghostly little shrimp. Now these these are much bigger than in real life. Remember I said one millimeter or smaller? This photo was courtesy of Reef Spy, so thank you Reef Spy. These guys live in the sand and on your rocks and in rock rubble. They tend to multiply at a faster rate as the water gets warmer. 82 degrees max. You shouldn't have your tank, you should not have your tank warmer than that. Now, they live in your refugium. A refugium is nothing more than a small fish tank that houses um, rock or chieto. And this is what chieto looks like right here. Okay. A lot of people use this. The chieto is very good. It has to be lit by the sun. Lamps. 6500K light source, which is more of a blue light, natural daylight. I have mine on for 12 hours. This chieto will grow and allow for uh, a home for the copods and, and for pods, pods to live in. Um, what the chieto also does is it removes the nitrates from your aquarium, which is very good. Nitrates are the last stage in your nitrogen cycle. Fish eat, then they pee and they go crap in your aquarium. That stuff is broken down safely into non-toxic nitrites. Nitrites are broken down into nitrates. Nitrates are really bad for your coral. Fish don't like it, but you really need to get rid of it. Okay, not 100%, but it has to be close to zero. This refugium with this chieto will lower your nitrates. Um, water changes will also get rid of your nitrates. Um, a protein skimmer will also get rid of your nitrates. 
Well, we're kind of getting off the topic. These, I just added a refugium a couple weeks ago because I want my pod population to grow. What I've been reading online is some people will actually use loofahs, you know, that you would shower with and clean yourself with um, because the pods can live in that. And pods also live in rock rubble. Um, so here's a close-up of what the Chieto looks like under light. Hundreds of pods live in here. Now, this guy, these guys do nothing but eat all day. You need an average of 75 pounds of rock for one of these mandarin fish. And you don't want to put them in an aquarium less than 100 gallons. They need a lot of food. And if those pods get depleted rapidly, which is very likely, these guys will starve to death. Again, I had one when I was starting out in the hobby. I just had to have it. He lasted about two weeks. He got thinner and thinner. He died. I just bought one last week. It's been a week. He's been doing well. But I'm always nervous because these guys are very hard to keep. Now, a lot of people have said that they can train these guys to eat frozen shrimp and even pellet food. I don't know how to do that yet. It's something I'll look into. But for now, I'm just making sure that the pods are really running rampant in my aquarium. Now, when I had my fish in quarantine about a year ago, my 125 gallon aquarium was covered in these pods. They come out at night and they especially come out when the fish are not around because they're not stupid. They know they're going to be eaten, so they hide. Hello? Hello? Hey, Steve. Hey, what's up? Who's this? What's up? It's Billy Pipes. What's up, dude? Hey, man, how you doing? What's going on? How are you? How you doing? Oh, I had a disaster today, man. Disaster. What happened? I uh, went to my sister's, forgot to turn on the air conditioner. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, dude. 88 degrees. Tank got to 88 degrees. Holy shit. So what happened? I lost almost all my fish. Oh, my God. Yeah. You forgot yeah. to turn the air conditioning on? Yeah, man. I never yeah. and I, turn mine off. I, I can't. I, I know, right? Well, it's because I just went from the 40 up to the 75 with the refugium underneath, you know, and I had it going for two days, and it is running perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I was cleaning the filters out in the air conditioner and forgot to turn it back on. Oh, man. Yep. What? I'm sorry, man. What fish did you lose? Um, nothing crazy. I, I, I had a bunch of green crumpets, uh, Bengay cardinals, uh, the health fricky. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. I had my one health fricky firefish. He's hiding, but I can't. I'm missing one fish. The only other fish too is my uh, my clown sir. My my clown pair actually didn't even get affected by it. It seems like really. Yeah, and it's crazy because we're talking about mandarins, right? So right. my my local reef store, my local reef store has got a forty uh, percent off all fish sale on the weekend. And um, he said they're going to have like twelve mandarins there. <laughs> wow, so awesome! It's like, but yeah, so yeah, I messed up, and I was like, oh my gosh, can't believe it. That sucks, man. It, it always sucks to lose fish, and I'm really sorry. I mean, it's, right. it's not a good thing, but, you know, you know why it happened. It's the worst when you lose them and you have no idea what's going on. You know, why are they right? dying? And, and I can't find a fish. I'm missing a fish. Yeah. That's the other weird part, but I don't yeah. know if you've ever lost fish before. Yeah, I have. In fact, with yeah. this with this mandarin, um, and uh -huh. just as an example, like, uh, I put the mandarin in, and then the next morning, he was not there. Now, you've seen my aquarium. There's yep. there's not much rock, and there's nowhere for anyone to hide. Um, right. Could not find him. I couldn't find him, and it, you know, 24 hours went by, 48 hours went by, nothing. Guy's not there anywhere. I And the back of my tank is open, so I got behind on the stairs. I'm yeah, looking right. in the back of the tank flashlight everything i looked on the floor in the sump could not find this mandarin anywhere and i'm like what the hell's going on so 
I decided, let me get in there. I'm going to I'm gonna move rocks around. So I, I pick up all yep. the rocks. I basically move all the rock, the aquascape, everything. Uh, He's not there. He's just gone. And I don't have a cleanup crew, so it's not like he died and he was eaten. Yeah. Yep. About three cool. or four days later, there he is. He's just swimming around. So, like you're like, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. He found a crevice somewhere, and he wedged himself. And he's he, I see where he is now. He found a home up inside the rock uh, I didn't realize existed. So these guys do wow. hide. And I didn't know this, but uh, when I was I reading didn't know up that on either. It, yeah, they also like to bury themselves in the sand I was reading. Really? Yeah, they like to burrow in the sand at times. So See, That's one thing I did not know. That could scare everybody. Yeah, so they like so to they burrow like to and they like to hide. Yep, not as much as the blue tang, but they do like to hide. Um, I absolutely love them, so my focus yeah. has been... You know, keeping the pod population up. So, yeah. What is the best way to keep the pod population up? Well, what I did was I just started a refugium, like I said, with the Chieto in there. Um, yep. I have uh, hundreds of pods in both of my overflows. So, uh -huh. that's good. Um, they're all over the sand and the rock. So, you can add more rock, definitely. Uh, that's going to yeah. be. These pods like to live on and in rocks and in the sand. Yep. So what I also did, and since you're asking, it's a great segue, um, yep. there's this product, I, th I believe it's by Seachum, um, the Pond Matrix. I use it. I, that's what I, like when you see my, if you see my update, yeah. I have, I'm just gonna load it and load it with the Seachem Matrix. I love this stuff, dude. It, it is, I had a problem with my 40 and I loaded, I put like, I think each bottle's worth is good for up to 100 gallons. Of water. Right. Yep. I put like two bottles in there as much as I could at first, mm -hmm. and my nitrate, my nitrite, my ammonia, it's all zeroed out ever since hmm. I put that stuff in there. Yep. Where did Where did you put it? Um, right now it's in my refugium. I took out because okay. you know you could do the mud or the sand or whatever. Right. So I put it in there because this way it's easier to clean once in a while. I can stir it up if I want to. Right. And right. And I'm just, lo every time I see a bottle at the store, get it, put it in there. It is so, because I went to Rifa Palooza and Seachem was there. Mm -hmm. And I've been using, I've been using their products since I had planted tanks. And I haven't had a, uh, I even called them once and said, hey, I think my bottle's a little old. And they sent me a whole line of the Aqua Vitro wow. stuff. Yeah. But the Seachem Matrix is, they, they did tests on it where they pulverize it and they can measure the square inch of, of, uh, room for the bacteria to grow and out of all the stuff even the stuff like in europe it beats that wow yeah so for pods that stuff is awesome well it's you know what i did i had this mm -hmm. stuff in my refugium in a mesh bag uh yep in my sump the refugium but before i came on the air here which is why i'm a little late what i decided to do and i wasn't crazy uh -huh. about doing it but uh, I opened the bag, and I poured all these uh, Pond Matrix rubble in my yep. display tank in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I did that because the pods love to live in rubble and chieto and rock and sand, anywhere they can get into yep. away from the fish. So I figured, you know... This is a good question for you guys. You guys may know, and I've been doing some reading on this. Now, these pods, what are the odds of them making their way from the refugium in your sump through your return pump? Because I'm thinking they're going to be butchered up and chopped up. How many are actually going right. to get back into your display tank? Some people in forums say, uh, oh, they'll get through. They're so microscopic, and the pumps and the propellers are huge. Um, but I thought, you know what? Let me not take that chance. I'm just going to pour all the pond matrix in my aquarium in the corner and uh, yep. let, let, them, let them live in there. And they, they actually have a name for that. As you probably know, they call it um, a, a pod condo. That's what they call them. <laughs> so you do a search for pod condo and tons of forums come up. So I don't know. I didn't want to put this in my display tank, but it's for the pods, which is for yep. the Mandarin. So... But what you could do, what I was thinking of doing might be a good idea, I don't know, is put the pond matrix, keep it in a mesh bag, right? But mm -hmm. use like a use a mesh bag that has like bigger holes. Mm -hmm. Put it in your refugium for like a week and then leave it in the mesh bag, take it out, 
and put the mesh back in your tank and then slop the one that was in there put it back in your sump that's right? yeah so. that's what i was thinking so you can kind of like transport them yeah 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 and that's what i'll probably do yeah but yeah i think the mandarin even my daughter i showed her and she was like that's the coolest fish ever so i think that's <laughs> next on the list because <laughs> they are they're, i wish they had the craziest colors and and, and as long as you don't have anything, you know, like some big, big ass like crabs that are going to eat them and stuff, you're good right. to go. But I didn't know that they hide like that. I'd be freaked out if I lost. Them. Yeah, they're they're so laid back, but they're also yeah. known as known for jumping out of the tank, from what I've read. Um, wow! And I didn't know that, but you know, um, I took the flashlight. I looked everywhere. I, this guy could not be found, and uh, it just popped up. Then he's just there, like nothing happened, right? But he's gorgeous. Um, yeah. Every every day I get home and I, I look for him because I'm nervous because I think <laughs> he's going to starve. But again, I was starting out. I unfortunately bought one. The LRS didn't ask me any questions. In fact, you know what? Even these guys, um, it's an LRS that I frequent, but the guy that I was dealing with, I could tell he was... He never worked there before, so he didn't know me, but uh. he didn't ask me what size tank do you have? Um, mm-hmm. Didn't ask me anything. He was basically wow. treating it like it's a goldfish. I'm like, hey, you guys have any mandarins? Yeah, we got one. You want them? There you go. <laughs> you know, I could have had a 10 gallon for all he knew, you know. Yeah. Which is sad because it happens. You know, you get this, you know, of course, right? You're going to walk into a store, maybe you're starting out in the hobby, and your daughter says, oh, I want that one. So you buy it. Yeah. Not knowing anything. Oh, yeah. Happens all the time. They'll give you a mandarin and a piranha for the same tank. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. They did that yeah. to me. I I was sold a blue tang for my twenty eight gallon. No one said anything. You know. Um, in fact, they said, "How big tank do you have? A twenty eight? Yeah, that'll be fine." So, I don't know. I don't know. I'll man. let you get. I'll let you get back to it. I just want to. Hey, good job on like. The, I love the live show because it gets us. Like I keep seeing the same guys show up every time, and mm-hmm. then. We start communicating back and forth. It's building like a really good community, so keep it up. And shout out to everybody that comes back and forth and watches because I'm watching their channels and they're watching mine. Hopefully, and we're we're just nice. you know because I'll be watching like yours. I'm learning and learning. And you're learning still, and then when you learn something new, and then I watch it, and then I learn something new. So it's good. Well, thanks a lot. Well, I really appreciate yeah. that. You know, I'm definitely not the best. I never pretend to be. If I don't know something, I'll yeah. say it. It's just you know what I come up with these ideas. And I just come up with, maybe the guys will like to see this. Um, and then I just film it. And luckily I've got a following and we've got, we do have a great yeah. community. I mean, you got, um, yeah. you know, you, thanks for calling in. And we got, you know, all these other guys and, you know, really cool people. And, you know, yep. CJ's Aquariums. Well, he's, yep. I mean, CJ, I mean, he's not real, a real reefer. I mean, he's got 45 gallons. Let's be serious, you know. <laughs> Um, I mean, come on, whatever. I'm telling you what, though, I watched the video the other day, and I'm really gonna, I'm gonna get into that algae scrubber. That's another thing. Yeah, CJ is but, awesome. He's he's yeah. very. Hey, how how far are you from North Jersey? Oh, I'm in Chicago. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I'm uh, in Chicago. Say, if you if you have, next year, if you get a chance for Reefer Palooza, yeah, that, that is, it's awesome. If I can make it out to the East Coast, yeah. I mean, you know, there's you know the one in Cali, but I mean, the the stuff that they have there and the prices are insane, insane. Yeah, I'm gonna. There's, I think, in October. I, I can't remember what it's called. I know the guys will shout it out here. Um, what was I gonna say? In Chicago, every year they have the uh, the aquarium show. I and it That's escapes. Right. It escapes me, but I'll be filming there, and I'll bring that to you guys, too. Yeah, yeah, do that. Get a nice, good video of the whole thing. Yeah. Nice. That'll yeah. work. It'll be great, yeah. And if anyone's yep. going to be in Chicago, maybe we can hook up and, you know, just hang out together. That'd be fun. Yeah. Trade some corals. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? I got I got a coral. You, you, the candy cane corals, right? They're usually like 10 bucks per, uh-huh. per head. Well, I got, they had them at the show. I got a um, a colony, thirty eight heads for forty five bucks. Wow, it's ridiculous! Wow, <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. Like if you, if you watch it, if you, on my video, you'll see my colony. It's got thirty eight heads now. I only got it for forty five dollars. Holy crap! That yeah. I don't know how they yep. they're just blowing them out because it's the reef of yeah. thing. 
Yep, they that's just, crazy. Yeah, it, it's amazing how many people actually have like frag systems in their basement, and they just. You, you, I, I didn't even know there's like 10 places right by me where you can just go to their house and go in the basement and just shop. That's weird. Crazy. This yeah. hobby has got a lot more people in it than I ever expected. I mean, yeah. the musician world is incredibly, insanely massive. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize that the Saltwater Aquarium hobby had so many people in it. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I thought that was a thing of the past, like, from the 1970s. I didn't realize, <laughs> you know, like, people were still into the hobby, you know? Yeah, well, keep up the good work. I'll keep watching. Thanks, man. Keep us posted right. on what you do and the Mandarin and all that stuff. Oh, another call. I'll look for those pictures in a minute. This is Steve. Who's this? It's Sad. How you doing, Oh, uh, what's up, dude? The show's over, everybody. The show's <laughs> over, everybody. Just go home now. Hang it up now, buddy, right? You, that's it. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, it's Ed's Fish Tank Extreme, and every time Ed calls, completely destroys the show. Completely destroys the show. He hangs up and he corrupts everything. <laughs> All the video feeds and audio feeds die. All right, anyway. So what's so going when on you Get some WD-40 for that chair. Mike's going nuts. Mike likes it. So that's why I got to keep it. <laughs> so how's that, that man we're doing good, huh? Yeah, so far, man. So far, he's he's doing all right. He's hiding on you, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he did. Search party out for him. But uh, he's out now. You know what? I found him. Uh, I found him out and about uh, a couple hours ago. He's out in the corner of the tank. And he's just loving life, and he's, you know, going at the rocks, and he's he's doing really good. So I, I hope this pop uh, pod population keeps up. I have a feeling it will. But uh, are you are you buying the pods from the fish store? You know, I did buy some pods from the store, but I don't think I really needed them because I've got hundreds of them in both of the overflows. So I'm just doing what I can to keep them uh, multiplying and, you know, keep that population up so she can eat. Um, Did you put a sponge in your new refrigerator? For? Because if you have a sponge in there, they usually like to breathe in that thing. No, I didn't, but I will tomorrow. Yeah, because they love those things. Okay, good to know. Now, and they do, they do end up going back into the uh, into your main display. They do. All right, I was going to yes, ask you that they. next. Uh, yes, they do. They're fine. I mean, through the return pump. I mean, they they do do that. And what happens? They'll get up into the into the rocks you have, and now you got the pond matrix. They go in there and then start breeding in there also. That's why I put the matrix in there. Um, I keep reading over and over again about rock rubble. You know, they like to live in the rubble, which makes sense. And I didn't want to put it in the tank because I didn't want the detritus, the fish crap, to get trapped in there. You know, I don't like that. But um, it's for the pods, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Well, that's good that they, they make their way in there. I've got a ton of pods, man, um, in my overflows. I was thinking about taking a turkey baster and just seeing if I can just get some of those guys out and just squirt them in the display tank. That, that wouldn't hurt either. I mean, every little bit helps, you know. Right. You know, just stir it up a little bit, see what I can get. I'm not going to be able to tell how many I get. But, you know, I'll do and, that like every few days or whatever, you know. And then maybe put some chato in there too because the, your tank will eat that also. Uh, in the display tank? Yeah, if you put it on your clip or something. Yeah, right. They'll, uh, they'll eat some of that stuff. Yeah, um, I don't know how long it takes because I'm new to the refugium thing. I never had one. Um, I don't know how long it takes for the chiota to grow. Um, how long, like, you said yours doubled in size. I can't remember what time frame. My, mine doubled in size within, like, two weeks. That's right. So That's I what was, you said. I was going to actually end up selling it today, but I forgot to, so now I'm just going to get it even bigger. Maybe I'll get some more money for it. All right. Well, that's good to know. Now, have, have you not noticed it grown at all since you put it in there? 
You know, it's been about a week, and I think it looks like it's grown a little bit, to be honest. You know, so I've got a 5,000K bulb. Um, maybe I'll up it to a 65K. I've heard and read that 5,000 is good enough, but maybe I'll get a 6,500 tomorrow. Hey, any, any, every little bit helps, you know? Right. So I think it's grown a little bit. Um, I'll put the sponge in there tomorrow, and... Um, hope for the best so I've done everything I can everything's looking pretty good so far um, that's it it looks all right well, you also might want to put some of those uh, micro spot uh, that micro spot uh, see, I can't speak micro spot uh, micro bugs in there also yeah because because they have to eat too the uh, the pods right yeah so that let me see what the name is. I keep forgetting what the name of these stupid things are. I got it right here. They're called the oh, Phyto Feast. Phytoplankton. Yep, exactly. Phytoplankton. That's what I was going to say. I thought about getting some of that stuff as well. Um, that helps. That's like the circle of life. You know, you feed them, they feed you. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'll get some of that. How often do you put that in there? I I put it in there every cup every uh, two or three days. How much? I use a uh, what do you call those things? The, like a turkey baster, and I feed the uh, the corals with it, and I also put some of the uh, stuff in the chato, so it helps the uh, the pods grow. Okay, that's what I was reading too. I just wasn't sure on like the time frame, but that's that's what I was reading too. Yeah. So, this so that's, that's how you learn stuff by listening, right? Right, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do that. I'll get some of that, and I'll throw the sponge in there, and uh, it should be good to go. You. I see you have a few girls on here tonight. I haven't seen yet. We do. That's really great. Yeah, uh, some girl from New York, Eins uh, Eins uh, Gomez, I think her name is. Okay. And then freshwater girl. Okay. Welcome everybody. So maybe they'll call in and say hey. That would be great. We need some new blood. Yeah, because God forbid that you get any of my blood. I know. You destroy the show, man. <laughs> I just get in everything and screw everything up. <laughs> hey, I saw Suicide Squad. Uh, I know you don't like that movie. How was it? It actually was pretty good. Because a lot of people say they don't like it. The only reason I'd want to go see it is for Harley Quinn. Uh, she looks like oh she, my own dude. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. She That's, is a hot bitch. She's she stole the show, you know. But whatever. I'm gonna do a whole Joker review on my Joker channel. He you know, he's not a bad Joker. I mean, he's not you know he's not your buddy, but you know right. It just he's pretty good. <clears throat> it's nothing to do with Heath Ledger at all. Because even if you know Dark Knight never came out, I just don't. I don't know. This guy looks like a. a you know, a watered a jag off? down, yeah, jag off, and a watered down version of a gangbanger with grit on his teeth. It's just not the Joker. I think of the Joker. I think of like Romero or you know Ledger or Nicholson. You know, the Joker. Yeah, yeah. not. But where did where did they get the Joker you like, Heath Ledger, from all these other Jokers? Where did they get him? I mean, you know, this type of Joker. Oh, the director actually kind of made that character up, and Heath just kind of expanded on it, and he just took it and ran with it. So between both of those guys, they, they came up with that. Oh, okay. So they wanted to put a slightly different spin on it, and uh, Heath actually locked himself away in a room, in a hotel room, for about a month at least, just with no outside anything, just all by himself so he can really get into his mind and get into the character. Um, so they, yeah, they they both made that character up. Um, well, I guess he went nuts doing it too with all the drugs. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, I know they were filming in Chicago at all hours of the morning. A couple of my friends they could see them filming on on LaSalle Street outside of the apartment windows. They were on LaSalle at like two, three in the morning, and that's when they did most of the shooting. Is two, three in the morning. Um, it was sleeping pills. He accidentally OD'd on them. Um, uh, he could he could not sleep, so yeah, he wasn't on drugs or anything. They 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 said it was the sleeping pills. He just took a bit too many, so he could not get used to the sleep schedule. So 
whatever. It's very unfortunate. Well, all right, Steve. Uh, good luck to you, and uh, happy reefing. Thanks, man. You too. Later. Thanks for calling. Okay, we talked about what the mandarins eat. Um, they eat pods, and they eat tons of them. You should not have more than one mandarin in your aquarium, because I've read they don't really get along with each other. And if you're going to do it, the rule is to have one mandarin for every 100 gallons. So as you can see, these guys are a little difficult to take care of. They're completely gorgeous, but they do require a lot of pods. A lot of those little mini, mini see-through crayfish, I'll call them. They're very, very tiny. And that's all these mandarins do all day is eat off the rocks looking for pods. Now, as Ed said, you can add to the pod population, help them multiply. You can also help them multiply by increasing the temperature, adding rock rubble, adding chiedo, looks like this, looks like this, and these little guys look like this, the ghostly images, all right? Now here's a JBJ45 aquarium, it's an all-in-one aquarium, not ideal for a mandarin. You need at least 75 pounds of rock, at least 100 gallons to make your life easier and so they don't die. If you're going to have this, they'll starve because there's not enough pods in this tank. you got to have the Chiedo, this stuff, in the back of the JBJ45. So, that's really all I wanted to say on these guys. You guys, Colin, I'm going to do a couple plugs. Like I said, um, read the video description below. Uh, when I'm not doing this reef stuff, I'm working on the the Joker box. It's my uh, Heath Ledger Joker impression channel. Check it out. Look in the description. Also, I want to get metalheads and musicians and fans of music to subscribe to my Rotter Studios channel. It's got a little tiny bit of subscribers right now. It's gonna be recording studio techniques. I'm gonna do a lot of screen captures. I'm in the process of mixing a band's album and mastering it right here. Uh, it's gonna be going out on iTunes and they're gonna be getting some big shows, hopefully. They're working with an entertainment attorney friend of mine. And also I'm gonna be interviewing her on the channel, as I said before. So once a month or bi-weekly, we're gonna have Michelle um, over the phone or you know in person I'm gonna interview her a lot of cool things movie reviews with DJ Mondo and a lot of silliness um, so that's all on Rotter Studios basically anything photography video editing and production cinematography directing and uh, music all the things that I'm into here if I had to do it again I said I would probably not have the 125 gallon, and a, a JBJ45 is the perfect size aquarium for me and most people. Um, I don't know. I really like it. I just, I don't have the time, and I feel sometimes I slip with it, you know, because I, I do everything I can to maintain the 125, so whatever. But the tank on its own, it's awesome. I love it. Mahoney should have his own channel. You know what he does? He actually does. It's called Angry Dummy, all right? And I haven't had much time to work with him on his channel. Um, so yeah, there's channels for everything, but I don't have the time. And Mahoney's been slacking, but his channel is called Angry Dummy. Uh, this is Steve, who's this? Reef Radio, Reef Radio. What's going What's on? up, What's dude? I thought you were a creeper because it says unknown number. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the only way you'll answer the phone. You got me blocked otherwise. <laughs> I'm saying that his tank's too small. <laughs> it's all right, though. It's all good. It's all good, you know. But, hey, I had a couple questions. I was curious about this. Uh, First of all, this is CJ, everybody. <laughs> if you don't know CJ's Aquariums. Uh, okay, so what's going on, man? Good to talk to you, man. Tank looks awesome. I still can't get over how your tank looks so awesome, man. Those deep blues and those vibrant colors, it's insane. Hey, man, I don't know. Things, life, life's been pretty good in the root tank. Yeah, for the last it looks few like months, it. So, 
I can't I can't complain. I'm just trying not to screw it up. You know, the good days don't last forever. So Yeah, I know. But uh definitely happy that got some confirmation on things working and things not working. So Yeah. You know, algae scrubber, better test kits and what test kits the crap, you know, that's the next stage, right? That was a great that tube. was a great video by the way. Um on your uh your test kit, the new one, with, uh, the Hannah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very good uh, for the phosphate. That was an awesome video, man. Very thorough. And because of your video, I don't know if I want one. I mean, you did a really good job at maybe turning me away from it. Um, yeah. I know you said that it's really precise, but it does kind of, I don't know, it looks like a pain in the ass. It is, without a doubt, it is the biggest pain in the ass. But once you get it right, averaging, you know, two or three results together, it still gives you a little little more peace of mind. Okay. Now, to be honest, probably still use my API to spot check my phosphate and then use my hand out to kind of dig into it if I'm really, really wanting to know. Because, okay. you know, making that fan, I think I did turn away some people, but at the same time, hopefully show the value of it so either way i guess pick your own pick your own as far as which way you want to go with it so you think what are you going to do you think you're going to use like like a, a, a standard kit and then use the hannah checker just to like you know see how close you are maybe not test as much with the hannah oh yeah without a doubt i'm not i'm probably gonna use this hannah checker maybe once a month if that all right and i'm going to use my api test but honestly if i don't see algae popping up in my tank What's the point of checking it, you know? Right, so, yeah, right, 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 exactly. So, um, that's pretty much That's pretty much it. But, dude, what's going on, man? What's going on with your tanks, man? I, I jumped in the show late. I don't make sure I'm not trying to miss anything. Did your tanks kill your Mandarin? I, I asked you that five times, man. What? Everyone everyone heard me in the comments. What you is the question? What's the question? Did, did your tanks kill your Mandarin? How oh, no, no. It, chased them, nothing? Nothing. No, no drama? No drama. It's like they just swim around and they just act like he's not there or she's not there. It's a girl. Um, they're all good. They're all good. Um, I got really nervous. Like I said, she hid for two days. I mean, I pulled rock up. I mean, she was nowhere. And I thought maybe the yellow tang got pissed off and took care of her. Um, no sign of her anywhere. Well, I found out there's a, a tiny wedge of rock kind of underneath one of the rocks and she must have been in there she found a she found her home so no she's good and no one's bothering her from what i've seen it, it's really nice thank god man, man that sounds wonderful good luck i tried one of my first root tank and it pretty much almost starved to death but i ended up returning it so i didn't uh, let it completely die out in my tank but after that you know lesson learned the hard way Never keep a mandarin if you can't keep it alive, you know. Yeah. So that's why I was wondering how yours was doing with the dual sumps and the refugium and all that stuff. Everything good? And good with that? Everything's very good, man. Thanks for asking. I love the dual sump. Um, I'm not going to buy a larger sump, not for a while. I love this setup. It's it's great. Um, the second aquarium is acting as a um, a return and also a refugium. I love it and. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd probably wait for the refugium to, to mature by like at least a month before I got the mandarin. However, I've got hundreds of pods in my overflows and there are hundreds of them. Um, I can see them before the, you know, as the light goes out, they come out. So I think it's good enough for the mandarin and the tank's been up for a year and a half. So we're good. I just hope that um, the pod population maintains so that Mandarin doesn't run out of food, you know? Yeah, so I'm surprised. I didn't even realize you had that many pods in that tank. But then again, you don't have any pod eaters. Your no, tanks I, are so big, not, not that it's eating the pods at all. So it's like zero competition. Right. Um, I've got no rasses. I've got nothing. So, you know, I'm sure that some of them get eaten by the tangs, but that's going to be accidental. Um, I don't have a cleanup crew. Um, well, I have. I just got like five little snails. That that that's it. I don't have anything else. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I I really wanted that mandarin. They're beautiful. But then again, I didn't want the extra worry that 
can I keep this thing alive? I don't want it to starve. I had one that starved and it was terrible. The, nobody told me. Nobody told me. I thought, oh, a fish, pellets, it'll be fine. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, you definitely don't want to add that guy to the JDJ, without a doubt. I don't think I'll ever be able to attempt to keep one of those. My, my pie population is like, zero in my tank man believe it or not taking up for over a year and a half yeah and i have no pods that are visible at all hmm. that i can ever see so i can't solve that puzzle at all i'm thinking the rasses have probably wiped out everything in my tank oh you've got rasses, rasses in there oh yeah without a doubt oh man know, well that's I'm, the problem that that well not a problem but that's it right there if you had one ras that's yeah. gonna tear into yeah. them you've got how many Three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's yeah. why you don't have any. They're nailing them. That they oh, they yeah. go to town on those things. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. But yeah, that's pretty much the latest, man. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to do a water change tonight. As soon as this, as soon as reef radio is over, I'm gonna get another cycle my sand bed out for five gallons worth. That's... Go to bed and then check my alkalinity in the morning to make sure if it's if it's up over eight, around eight point four, eight point five, then I think I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Uh, yeah, you will. What? Yeah. I just don't I know found... how your your corals mm -hmm. look so great. I mean, I'm having trouble with my coral, the few that I've got, um, just like hammer, frog spawn. Um, and I think that's because my nitrates are higher. You know, my nitrates are higher. I'm wrestling with it because my bio load, I've got too many fish, big tangs, um, and too many, quite honestly. I'll admit that. Um, but you've got such, your corals have got such great growth and colors are outstanding um mine just aren't growing at all they haven't in months well i'll tell you one thing um i don't i don't think you revisited it a lot but lighting lighting man that's the, true um, too the lighting you have on your tank and you run those glass tops with it yeah so you have tank this you have lighting that may not be as adequate and you get glass tops that are you know refracting that light and True. Cutting back the penetration on it, so I plus think that will probably be something you can think about. Plus, there's salt creep on the glass. You know, I mean, that's that's all huge. But I just can't risk the fish jumping out. And you don't have any yeah. glass t lids on nothing. No, I just run my uh, my screen top. All my right. screen top is the only thing I run. So yeah, fish do jump. So I mean, you don't have to change anything if the corals aren't dying. That's you know that's one thing. But having them grow is another. Yeah. So that's pretty much. Probably, I think beyond water, lighting is, is the is the biggest other thing you probably want to think about. Yeah, that's, honestly, you know, I changed something. The tank looks great. I mean, the tank is swimming around. Yeah, know. it's true. You know what? I had the same light and glass lids on my seventy-five gallon. And the corals are doing really well. Just you know, it's and the 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 tank is just as high as the seventy-five was, but for some reason, it's just it's just not working. You know, whatever. Once, oh, yeah. once the nitrates get lower, I'm I'm gonna look next year at maybe getting some uh, different lights. Oh yeah, well you got a six foot tank too, so that's gonna be hell, hell, you know, crazy expensive lighting that anyway. I wouldn't yeah. even worry about it. I would just make your JBJ a coil tank. It's easy and cheaper to light. You know, that's a really do. good idea. I'm gonna make that like my uh, anemone tank mainly. Um, mm -hmm. Wait for the uh, bubble tip to split and then just. Put one bubble tip in the 125 and just keep it as like a really cool anemone tank. That would be awesome, and uh, the clowns will love it. I'm gonna put those clowns. Oh, yeah. Those clowns are in the quarantine still, man. Um, I'm gonna move them back into the JBJ this weekend. Hey, I'll tell you what. When you introduce them, try introducing them uh, in the way I showed you on my bed a few weeks, bit ago. Okay. How I got my clowns to host. To introduce introduce them with the net facing the anemone. Uh huh. And see if you need them to touch it. If you can get them to at least touch the anemone, yeah, then that'll double your chances for them to host it. Oh, nice. That's something I've noticed. So make it a try, man. Cause if you see that happen, I think you'll be, you'll be, you'll be thrilled. You know. Oh yeah. That's what we're all doing this for. So I just hope. Worth a try. I just hope there's not going to be any fighting because there's going to be two pairs of clowns in there, and they all get along great. And there's one anemone, so hopefully they don't fight. Oh yeah. It. But, well, you know what? Hey, it's one way one way to find out, man. Who, who don't like a little drama? <laughs> <laughs> or <Okay>. death. <laughs> hopefully not death, but just, yeah, a little drama. Not. just a little bit of drama. Oh, well, yeah. But I'm yeah, going to use your technique and I'll film it. 
Um, and then I'll, so you can see what it looks like, you know, and, and, and how it goes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. You give it a try. I mean, hey, it worked for me. I mean, that damn thing was hosting within 20 minutes. Really? Of me doing that. So, I And they mean, kept hosting it then? He's still in there now. Not oh. only is he in there now, he, now he's starting to, uh, get a little, little feisty with my, uh, my bulb that I blow out to the tritus with. Damn, what is that called? Shit, I forgot what it's called. You know what I'm talking about. What? Turkey baster. <laughs> Turkey baster, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you know but, what? Uh, I took, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Sometimes I am. But, you know, I don't know everything. Um, I just, like I said with Billy, I just share what I know. And so, I, I'll be honest, I never did uh, the turkey baster thing where you... You use a turkey baster, you fill it with water in your tank, and you you, you squeeze it and you, you blast your rocks with water, and it cleans off the rocks, because when the fish take a crap, they, they do it on your rocks. And I never did that. And then I saw your video, um, and I saw all the stuff coming off the rocks, and I thought, oh my God, I've never... So let me just try this. So I followed your lead, and man, it's like so much stuff, like massive amounts of dust and just you know yeah it blows off the rocks i'm like oh my god why didn't i do this before and <laughs> that might sound silly to people like well you you got a reef channel you should know these things i don't care i don't know everything you know uh, <laughs> man you are man you are not lying sometimes sometimes we assume that a lot of things are common knowledge but it's not so just like you said i think in uh reef radio episode three i don't know how many episodes it was you gear your channel back towards the beginners and kind of, you know, circling back around. There's so many things that you've learned now to been in the hobby that you probably didn't even realize as a beginner that covering those kind of things would probably be a good idea. So, you know, like you said, using a turkey basin to blow out stuff and even something as simple as, you know, the best way to handle if your salinity is too high in your tank, you know, figuring out how much water it takes to drop it down or dilute it. You know, something like that. That's a, that's a beginner mistake that happens to everyone. And that's, those are the kind of videos that probably would benefit people. So, Right. I mean, there's things that I keep learning. We all keep learning. And crazy little things like, you know, uh, the, the water temperature. Is it the water temperature? Yeah, the water temperature actually affects the salinity level. Which that's really getting down to the, you know, the, the complex. Which I don't like. If your water's one hundred two four and it goes up mm -hmm. by like one degree, it's gonna throw your salinity off by like a point or whatever. I don't know what that is, but I read that and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I mean, there's so many factors in this hobby. It's it's amazing, and uh, mm -hmm. it's incredible how the ocean survives and how the whole circle of life. Um, happens and uh, God created all these creatures to live and thrive together. It's really, really amazing. And for us to duplicate this in a glass box is uh, pretty incredible because I don't know how it happens. Uh, yeah, man, it's a it's a never, never ending, never ending journey, man. And and sometimes you get comfortable thinking you know everything. And right. That's where you get in trouble. I'm constantly asking myself questions. <laughs> right. You know, like what's next? Like now I figured out, hey, my phosphates are, you know, point zero one eight, which is fantastic by region terms. But now what's the next best question after that? Hey, how does that affect my, my coral growth? How does that affect, you know, everything else in my tank? You know, what right. do these levels mean? Those are the kind of questions I'm asking and researching now. So it never it never stops, man. Just like the pond matrix, like how do you get it to actually work? I remember right. uh, the last guy you had on my hair, he, he was preaching about pond matrix. I do as well. I've yep. been using it. You know, in the JBJ, I put it in an area that it's not getting a lot of flow, but at the same time, it's still not the best area. The best area for pond matrix would be a low flow area in a sump. Right. You know, so the, the lowest flow area I can provide is probably my filter tray. Now, the top half of it's getting a lot of flow, but the bottom half is probably not. That's probably where my, you know, my nitrates are actually being consumed right. besides my tank. So, I mean, it's just small things like that, man. You could, be, you could put the sponge in the top, of course, and then you can just put the mm -hmm. pond matrix in the second chamber of your 
JBJ, you know. Yep, yep. So, I mean, you can do it that way as well. Um, but, I mean, honestly, that's why I don't really make teaching videos, man. But if someone was to ask me why I do something, I can give you an answer right away. But as far as teaching you how I do it, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like getting into the science because someone always has something to say, you know, about why you do certain things certain way. That's why sometimes I just make a video and I just show my tank. Yeah. And I just let and I just shut up. That's it. Hey, I do it this way so it looks like live with it, agree with it, don't agree with it, whatever the case may be. That's what I do too. You know, I'm not a scientist. I'll I'll just do exactly what you do. I'll say, I have this problem. Uh, I'm making this up and I'm doing this and it seems to be working and here's what I read and here's what kind of backs it up. It could be wrong, but this is what a bunch of other reefers are doing and I'm trying it out. Take it for what you want. Maybe it'll help you out. You know, um, if anything else, it'll give them an idea. If they don't like the idea, like the canister filter siphoning that I just did, that was phenomenal. Um, if people don't like it, I don't care. It works for me, and maybe if anything else, it'll just give someone an idea to spark something else that'll work for them. Um, so whatever, I just throw ideas up there. Um, oh yeah. But definitely, definitely, man. That was actually a great video. It was yeah. a great idea, too. The only thing I thought about, it just gave me a flashback to when I had my cichlid tank and the FX5, and you know, I spent 350 bucks for it or something. Yeah. And cichlid spit enough to where the sand got sucked up into it. Yeah. And it messed up my impellers on the canister filter. That would have been my only concern. I didn't know if you actually ran into any problems with sand actually grinding. No, Within not grinding, but I did pull up a decent amount of sand, probably like a quarter cup worth, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about a quarter of a cup of sand um, in the big foam blocks on the bottom of the canister filter. They stopped it, but yeah, I got a, I got a decent amount of sand, whatever. Uh, okay, but yeah, either way, I mean, if it worked out, hey, it worked out. But yeah. it just like you said, the, mo the point of that is to motivate something in someone's mind to spark it. I thought, hey, that's a good idea, but how would I work around this problem? You know, how do we improve on it? That's basically what it's about. That's right. So, and, you know, yeah. because a lot of people were asking me, well, like the, my first video I did, I used a siphon through the sump sock, right? And then people with, uh, you know, the JBJs are like, well, I've got an all-in-one. I don't have a sump and I don't have a sump sock. So how am I going to do this? I'm like, I don't know. So now, you know, now that <clears throat> if they want to buy a canister filter or if they got one laying around in the basement like I did, it's easy to do now. You just connect the siphon to it and you put the hose going into your tank or in the back of your tank. And that's just how you do it now. You're fine. Buy yourself a small canister filter and that's how you do it. You don't have to worry about gravity. It works great. So Man, I tell you, I tell you what, I wish I, I, wish I had onto one of my old Sunshine filters. So I probably would use it on my damn JBJ now. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. Or just go to <laughs> Craigslist and pick one up for cheap. Oh, yeah. That, you know what? I might do that. But you know what? It, if I'm going to get on Craigslist, I'm going to be tempted to buy a tank. And I know. That's no good That's no good for me right now. You just, you just talk about multiple tanks, how much of a pain that is. I know. That, that's the only reason my tank looks like it does now, because it's my only tank and I can focus on it. I know. That's been my only, you know, thing I have to worry about, so... I, yeah. <laughs> I have been neglecting my JBJ. I do just enough to get by. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Like by the time you get done cleaning and, you know, siphoning and water change and blowing off the rock with a turkey baster and feeding the guys and everything else we do, then you got to go and do damn tank number two. Yeah. And oh, I just, yeah. man, I don't have the time for that. So I do the best I can. And to be honest, I kind of thought about selling the JBJ forty five, but I love it too much. Um, well, you know what? It'll be it'll be pure profit. You got it at such a steal. I know. You know, so I mean, hell, do it. I mean, you got a taste for it. You at least you know what it is now. Right. Mission accomplished. You know, that's that's the main thing. You can the, move on. And the only thing hey. is, like, what do I do with my clowns then? You know, my four clowns. Could they live in the in the tank with the tanks? I mean, is that possible? They could, but there's another pair of clowns in there that are bigger, and I just don't want there to be a, a fight or a murder, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. But, well, 
we'll see. I'll let you. I'll let you surprise us what you decide <laughs> on that. But but what I'm what I will do though, because I think I think people are probably tired tired of hearing me. I'm going to jump off here. Let someone else call in, and I'll jump back in the chat and continue enjoying Roof Radio, man. It's blowing up, baby. Cool, man. Thanks again, uh, CJ. And he also, I always have to say, he named this show uh, Reef Radio. He came up with it. So yeah, thanks, yeah, man. I got 10%. I own 10%. He owns 10%. Go. He's got 10% of the company. He does. All right, man. You go ahead. Take it easy. You too, man. Right. Great shows. Thanks for calling in. All right, later. Later. All right, you guys, it was CJ, CJ's Aquarium. Um, I am not seeing what you guys are talking about. So that's it for the Mandarin. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I learned you something. Mandarins, they are very hard to take care of for all the reasons in this video. Don't forget to check out Rotter Studios. Don't forget to check out the Joker Box. Links to those channels that I run down below. I'm doing the best I can to have a lot of videos. I feel like that's all I do is video production. I gotta find guitar playing time as well. It's just not, not working out. Yeah, Mike, CJ is gonna step up his game to a 60 gallon cube. The show is not going all night. I love hanging out with you guys and I, I, I thought it was gonna be a 20 minute show, I swear to God, I thought it was.